Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Force here with some more Game of the Week coverage of Scrolls, the digital collectible card game slash turn-based strategy game from Mojang. Now in today's video, more gameplay. Uh, specifically, we'll be looking at some multiplayer. I'd also like to show you at least what the trials are all about. Uh, sort of work like a campaign, a set of challenges, if you will. That's pretty cool. Uh, but first, I just want to show you quickly my three decks, the current ones that I'm working with here. Uh, I've got just I haven't really played around too much with the dual color decks or the tri-color decks even. I've just been focusing on mono decks. So my mono growth deck here, uh, I'm just going to, going to go ahead and cycle through. I think I can cycle, oh, it's cycling through every other card. Why isn't it going through one card individually? I don't know, but uh, this is a very, uh, oh, what am I doing? I'm silly. <laughs> I was looking through my library. So the deck is right here. There it is. Um, so this is a very, very aggressive deck. It's the most aggressive faction of the three, and the reason that is is because lots of low casting cost creatures. Uh, haste is attributed to this uh, particular faction as well, which I don't believe there are any haste creatures in the other factions. I could be wrong. I'm specifically talking about uh, two things right here. We're talking about the Ragged Wolf as well as this guy right here, the Kinfolk Veteran. So very fast and aggressive. You build up your wolves. You build up your Kinfolk. You can, you can hit hard uh, really early on, and I also got some defense offensive capabilities in there. The second deck that I have here, the Mono Order deck, the balanced of the two. I really like this particular uh, faction as well. I really like just the use of the soldiers and how they kind of uh, synergize with each other, like this guy giving plus one attack to everyone in a row that he is in. I like the spiky attribute, although that only works against melee opponent creatures doesn't work against ranged ones it's also got some interesting things like new orders allowing you to move your stuff around and uh, honorable general is really baller <laughs> yeah there's just there's just some really cool things it seems like i like the balance that this deck has it's also got this one ridiculous range creature here uh which i can show you if i can find it what is my problem there it is the crossbowmen look at this for one resource, it's a 4-2. Now it's got a three. Uh, it's got a three cooldown, so it takes a while or countdown, but still. And then the last deck here is the Mono Energy deck. I think this might be the deck that we play with. It is the most defensive. It takes the longest to get going, but once it gets going, oh boy, is it a beast! Lots of defensive structures, lobbers, all sorts of fun stuff like that. And since we're going to be playing this particular deck in the multiplayer match, we can stop looking at it and just jump right in. So how multiplayer works, there's a couple of things you can do. You can just hop into a ranked match or a quick match. Uh, differences ranked, you'll be playing against people of comparable level. Quick match, you'll be playing against, I suppose, anyone else queuing in quick match. Or you can challenge someone in any of these chats to a duel. You can go, I challenge you, and then you'll be able to fight them, which is fun. Um, but we're just going to quick uh, click ranked match. We're going to click on mono energy. That's the deck I like to play. And then look at that, just like that, super fast. It's been super fast uh, this entire week of, uh, of the launch here of the beta phase. It's beta, not alpha, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's beta. And um, yeah, it's just been, it's been working fine. Okay, so opening hand here. So we're just gonna play a game. I just wanted to show you some multiplayer. <laughs> I'm guessing this is someone who knows who I am. Uh, well, I don't know why else they'd say, oh my God, unless they just really got a bad, bad hand. <laughs> All right, please just go. I want to do this game, Chris3015. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is we're going to start off by sacrificing my rigged. Uh, rigged is really good when I'm set up here. Also, this video, I'd like to explain the mechanics a little bit further than I was uh, able to in my initial video, just because I, you know, I just started playing the game, but now I've been playing it for a while. Uh, so there's no, there is a deck and you are randomly drawing cards, but you cannot deck out. Whenever you use a scroll, which I'm probably gonna bounce back and forth between calling it a scroll and a card, whenever you use a scroll, the scroll goes back in your deck. So you don't have to worry about running out, you're constantly reusing them. So I don't have to worry about dumping one of these, it doesn't go into a graveyard, it simply goes back into my deck. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's freaking out here. It's kind of funny. So weird that, you know, finding finding fans. Hey, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so. And uh, this is his first match, too. That is actually really funny that he bought the game after seeing uh, the coverage. 
this coverage, or he saw coverage before this coverage, and then he plays his first match against me. Uh, anyways, so we are going to then get another resource. So yeah, there's no decking out. You don't have to ever worry about that. I think the next thing I'm going to dump is my plating. Plating is nice. Uh, so let me show you the scrolls that I have in my hand. I'm basically saving up right now. I'll be playing the Scatter Gunner next turn, which is a 4-2 with two countdown ranged attack. Uh, Clock Library, awesome defensive structure. At once it reaches a countdown to zero, you get to draw three cards. So not only is it a five defense blocker for you, but it also gives you card advantage. Three scrolls is a lot. Uh, he's going to throw down his two, three with a countdown of two. He might be, play he's, he might be playing the full, he's playing the same uh, faction as I am, but he might be playing a multicolor one, so we're not sure here. And what I'm going to do, he's a 2-3. Uh, I've got a few things. i got a few Inferno Blasts. i got the Scatter Gunner. I'm actually going to ditch my Thunder Surge. It is good. You know what? No, I'm going to ditch, ditch this guy for... Eh. Now, we're going to ditch this one for resource. And then we are going to put down the Scatter Gunner. And then we are going to pass the turn. So it's a 4-2 with a 2 countdown and ranged attack. And... Um, yeah, well, it's it's just, it's really powerful, really powerful attack with four. It's only got a, a, a cooldown of two as well, which is a, which is a relatively short one. And we're probably just going to stick that behind the clock library so that he's nice and safe. And I'm going to keep him in this position. So let's talk about positioning. Why wouldn't I put it right next to him? Well, I'm not. I didn't put him in the middle tile because he could then move over and be in line with me so that the turn after, once he's out of countdown to zero, he can attack. So I'm trying to keep him safely away from the attack and provide him time to attack himself. And you know what I could do? I could actually get rid of these guys. Um, instead of playing instead of playing my clock library to protect him, I could actually get rid of these guys with two turns in a row of an Inferno Blast. Hmm, kind of thinking that I might just do that. So we're going to go right now, Inferno Blast. This is uh, one damage to a target tile and then all adjacent tiles. So we're going to do this this turn. And then next turn, we will do it again. And then that will kill off these two. It'll leave him still with that one, but that's fine with me. So end the turn. Countdown goes to zero. He is going to be able to attack now with this guy. Next turn, he would be able to attack with these two guys, but I'm going to Inferno Blast them again eliminating them and bringing him down to one one health that is unless of course he moves any of these but he doesn't necessarily know that i have another inferno blast so yeah really interesting oh that guy's now out of range good for him uh it's <clears throat> really interesting having to constantly think about okay which cards it's not that it, these cards that i'm ditching they're not in the deck because they're bad they're in the deck because they're good and i plan to use them but it's 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 this constant debate, especially when you're playing against real people. As much as I could use this in the future, what is more important for me to keep now? And what should I ditch now for resource? And then there's also this struggle. I'm sure there's going to be a metagame. There's there's always a metagame. I'm sure there'll be a metagame behind it. Whereas there is going to be, you know, an ideal way to build up your resource. How many resources should you go for? How soon are you doing it? It's gonna depend on how much the resources of the things in your deck cost and all sorts of things like that. You know, should I ditch for another resource? Should I draw two cards right now? Should I just keep these and do nothing? You know, is that is that going to be an instance? I typically do one or the other, unless there's absolutely something that I positively need. I typically am dipping, uh, destroying something to either draw cards or get a resource. Now, right now, for example, End of Reason is a cool spell, but I don't necessarily need it right now or anytime relatively soon. So I'm gonna ditch that for a resource, get myself closer to playing my cannon automation. And for now, though, we're gonna throw this down, which will deal one damage to all that, and that's gonna bring him down. And he could return to kill this guy next turn by focusing on him, so I'm gonna move him and make his attack hit him, otherwise he could kill us next turn. <laughs> this guy, he is a chatterbox, huh? That's good. <laughs> All right, so we're able to take out that. And so far, no, uh, I have done no totem damage. He has hit me with two damage. But I'm not concerned. I'm feeling like I'm in a pretty strong position. I've got five resource. Um, I've, I'm pretty confident with the cards that I have in my hand. 
And all he's really hit me so far with was the Gravelock Outcast. I have eliminated lots of his creatures, but at the same time, I've also ditched scrolls to eliminate those creatures. You know, his creatures are a single scroll. I am ditching scrolls to eliminate those scrolls, so it sort of comes out as a fair trade. So maybe I'm not even in a good position. Maybe I'm in the exact same position as he is, you know? <laughs> it's a funny thing to think about, right? Okay, so we just, uh, we do have enough resource now. I could play the Bonds, which does two damage to a creature before attacking. That would kill him. Or I could play this guy. Hmm, question is, which one do I find more important? And this is the kind of struggle you're constantly doing. Do I play this? Do I ditch this to draw a card? What do I do? What do I do? Do I ditch this to get a resource to get out my cannon automation? The cannon automation is supremely good. So for that reason, I think I am going to ditch this to get it. It is just a really, really good card. Countdown to two, five damage, four defense, it's a ranged attack, plus all combat damage dealt to him is reduced by one. Now that I've got six resource, six resource is kind of a sweet spot where I, I, I stop ditching for, for additional resource and I start focusing on filling up my hand and drawing cards. But I like to get to six resource nice and fast because of because of uh, creature creature scrolls like this. And again, I, I'm constantly calling them cards and scrolls. And I, I heard in the last video, someone was like, Force, you're an idiot. They are not cards, they're scrolls. Well, it's car. It's considered, Mojang themselves consider this a collectible card game. So even though they're, their twist on it is the fact that they're scrolls, it's still a card game. We can still, I guess, technically call these cards. These are cards with frayed edges. <laughs> okay, that's the, that's the difference here. That's about it. Um, all right, so he's gonna be able to hit with this next turn. I actually do wanna get rid of that uh, really soon. So what I'll be doing is I'm going to push these guys over. We are going to drop the clock library right here. I'll show you what that guy does if you don't know in a minute. And uh, we could play also the gun automation to kill him and to defend on this side. Hmm. He only does two damage, right? Yeah. So we're gonna I'm gonna say, I'm gonna feel comfortable placing that over here. So we're gonna hit. It's only gonna hit him for four though, so he will still be alive. Uh, but this thing is really crazy. It, it it strikes a random tile when it attacks, but it does five damage. It's a lot of damage, and it strikes every two turns. So it can randomly hit anyone on the map, or it could miss. It's still it's it's pretty strong. It is a rare scroll. It is uh, one of the the higher rarities. It's got the. Uh, the edges there, that's how you figure it out. So this type of edge with just the one bar, that's uncommon. Uh, this no, nothing highlighted on the edge is, is common. Oh, what the heck, I'm trying to, nothing highlighted on, come on, nothing highlighted on the edge is common. Okay, good, he missed, thankfully. And he also has an ether pump here, which I am going to be happy to get rid of as well. Ooh, I could, I don't know if I can cast that. I can't. It has to be on a creature, not a structure. You can flip and the attack and health value. I was like, can I make his health value value zero and effectively kill him? Looks like I can't. So at this point, let's get rid of redesign. It flips an attack and health value. Let's get rid of that. Draw two. And we have got a concentrated fire, which makes for an extra attack. And that is exactly the type of thing that I need right now. That's going to allow him, who can attack this turn, to hit twice, killing both of those. So we cast that on him. Beautiful. And then we say attack, and then he goes boop. And then he goes, oh no. Oh, he had a plating on that, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize. He had a he had a plating on that that prevented all damage from the next attack. So I didn't get to kill this, but at least he got rid of uh, at least he got rid of that one thing, which is kind of frightening. All right, he's gonna play down a cannon automation. He'll be placing that behind his structure. I've got my cannon automation, plus that guy right there. And uh, he will be attacking there for two. And now it's my turn to attack. I'll be hitting that. But what else can I do? What else can I do? Well, we've got this guy right here. Uh, he's not bad, but not necessarily what I'm looking for at the moment. So we're going to get rid of him for two scrolls. And this is exactly what I was looking for. All units with ranged or lobber have their countdown decreased by two, which will allow him to attack. And I can even uh, do the b b Bombarder as well, or the Scatter Gunner as well. I, I can afford to do both of those. So that's what I'm going to do. We are going to do him right here for two damage to that. Uh, this will get five damage through plus four damage through. That will actually be reduced by one because he gets reduced damage. But then we can throw the Scatter Gunner down. And then we play the Bombard, which reduces their countdowns by two. And then we can attack. So everything out of mind is going to attack. 
We're gonna get rid of that. We're not gonna kill that because he, he takes reduced damage. And unfortunately, it also reduces his damage because it's it was just any ranged or lobber unit, not just mine. So he will be able to attack and he's actually gonna kill off my clock library uh, as a result of all those shenanigans. But I got rid of everything else that he had, so I'm willing to lose the card advantage to bring him down to just one creature. And now he's really vulnerable. I've got lots of power in play here. So this is pretty good. Now, when it comes to these matches, um, oh, he just did uh, two attacks. So he's actually gonna kill off that too. Very nice for him, very nice. Um, let's get rid of the gun automation to see what else we got. Copper automation plus a potion of resistance. Well, let's go with the copper automation here. Yep. And then I'm going to place down the catapult of goo which does uh, lobber damage. It's goo lobber, which means it, it also increases the countdown of anything that it hits by one, which is really good. And then beyond that, I've got this resistance, which reduces damage um, to one for three rounds to any, uh, any enchanted, any enchanted unit. End the turn, no attacks right now. So multiplayer matches, they're pretty interesting. If you win a match, you typically get between three and 400 gold. If you lose a match, you get like less than 100. Uh, so there's a really big discrepancy between winning and losing when it comes to what you get from it in return. The copper aut automation is really cool for one casting cost with a one countdown. It does four damage. It dies after it does damage, but this is something you can get into play turn one and then attack turn two, which is really nice. Multiplayer's been going pretty well though. Oh no, he did one damage to everything, killing off my one guy there with his Inferno Blast. Well, that's a bummer. Uh, I will be able to kill this off next turn, one way or another. And try to stick with that advantage. And we're saving the Potion of Resistance until I find it necessary, or if I don't find it necessary, I may just get rid of it. Like, for example, putting it on a creature with one health left doesn't do me any good because they'll still take that one damage, so. And he's trying to figure out, what do I do with the cards in my hand? What is going on? And this is pretty, you know, this is pretty normal. You know, we've been going at this now for 11 rounds. Uh, and this is sort of, this game, it can be very, very slow paced, uh, even with the faster decks. You know, even if I was playing as or against a growth deck, the, they, are, they are certainly quicker, but if someone gets up some defenses, ooh, he is gonna, this is gonna die next turn now. He just put down an Ember Bonds and uh, it's gonna kill it when it attacks. So it's gonna attack and it basically before it does damage, it's going to die. So what's gonna happen there? So we could do that and we're, I'm actually gonna get rid of the Potion of Resistance because I do wanna keep my Bombard. We're gonna get rid of that. Drawing two, and picked up an Inferno Blast, plus a burn. Which one should I do? And both of them will kill this. Inferno Blast is one damage to an area, but burn, would, if I keep this, I can get rid of a future creature. Um, so let me just do this. We're gonna kill him with that. This way my damage can go through and actually hit a totem. And then we hit turn. He dies, two damage before attacking. Two damage goes through there. Four damage to the totem. So currently I'm winning the Totem War. His board is clear. I am down to just a few creatures. But yeah, this is pretty pretty standard here when it comes to a scrolls game. It can definitely be very slow paced. It's even slower paced in this instance because both of us are playing the slower factions. So that's why this is sort of, you know, totem damage is coming, but it's certainly taking some time. <laughs> All right, so he takes reduced combat damage, but non-combat damage he takes in full. So for that reason, I'll probably try to burn him. We're gonna burn for three. There we go. And then we will be able to uh, do some more damage in the future. I'm gonna move him over one right here. Threaten to kill him. Otherwise, I'll just throw an Ember Bonds on him, which is what he just did to my uh, range guy. So what this is doing right now, the Catapult of Goo, it's got that four tile area this is really preventing him from placing creatures in 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 those tiles because it you know every time he gets hit with one of them not only do the, do the creatures in there take one damage but with the gulabar they get an increased countdown which means it's that much longer until they can attack um, so what I use these for is to set up sort of zone control. I basically put this in a position where, okay, I want to go for these three tiles. So I'm gonna prevent you 
from placing any units as defense in four of those tiles, or at least make it more difficult for you to do so, which much more easily allows me to push those tiles. But at the same time, I also eliminate a, a spot in the tile row that can actually hit something. Ooh, and he's returning with a very nicely placed uh, destroyer right there, which attacks every single turn and, uh, and does two damage. So that really stinks, because this thing is gonna take those two damage. Decisions, decisions. I'm going to dump a dump a bombard, bring me up to seven resource. Now I can play, I can't play all of this. I can only play, okay, so we can play the Ember Bonds. I can do two, I'm gonna do two damage to that. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. We're gonna do Ember Bonds, two damage when he attacks. So he is dead when he attacks. Spark, two damage to this. My attack does two damage to it. Goodbye, goodbye to you. So with that, I just saved my gun automation as well as my uh, catapult from taking damage. But I saved my gun automation from dying there with that move. And now when he attacks, the Ember Bonds will do two damage to him. He's at one health, so he will die. Still got this guy right here, he's pretty cool. Uh, when it reaches a countdown of zero, instead of attacking, uh, you can increase its countdown by one to increase the attack of a structure by one. Now clearly this deck with a lot of structures that's a good card to have in it. I don't particularly have that in mind, but it's still good. It is a good one. What? He took reduced damage? What did he... Oh, he played a plating. Darn you. I'll get rid of you one way or another. Oh, he's going to hit him right now. So I don't need to do anything. Does he... Okay, yeah. Oh, and the Ember Bonds are still on him, so he's dead right now from this. Um, he should have actually moved his creature. We're gonna burn this, three damage, killing him off, drawing a card. Then we get another, we get a Catapult there. And he's even taking damage from that, plus that. Another Catapult. With that, we will defend over here. And I think I'm gonna keep him here so that he can hit him for damage. I guess I can move him back but not in time to attack, so. And I'm gonna draw two, we got uh, those two cards there, there we go. Okay, so here's an attack, one damage goes through. Why did he take zero again? Oh, it's just all combat damage is reduced by one period, okay. But the Ember Bonds will still kill him when he tries to attack next, unless he drops down another plating. Okay, so yes, because one damage is not enough, you need to do at least two damage to this creature because all damage is reduced by one. I guess I thought for a moment it was all damage reduced is reduced to one, but no, it is not to one, it is by one. And now, what are you going to do, Chris, 3015? Hmm. Interesting. So again, I've placed down another catapult trying to take control of more area. So it's this top side that I'll be focusing on when it comes to doing damage. Or at least I've got a better chance to focus on it. Also defending this totem by placing him down there. And now we're just waiting on Chris. Luckily there is a timer for when people take a while, <laughs> like Chris is doing. He can't sit there forever. In fact, he's only got 15 more seconds. 15 seconds to decide what to do. Places down a wall to defend that. Destroys the structure. Boom. All right, so I can get rid of him now with this. So I'll do that. And we could also throw it on a copper automation right behind him, which I think I will do um, so that I can hit that for four. And then Destroyer or Clockwork Library. Hmm. Well, why don't we go with Destroyer right here so that we can hit that every turn for two. And actually, that will we'll kill him before he even does anything in return. So there we go. Dominating the field there. And we're going to hold on to our Clock Library. Or I could just get rid of it now to draw two cards. So do I hold on to it to play it next turn to draw three, four turns after? Or do I draw two right now? I guess I'll just draw two right now, right? I mean... Guess that makes more sense. <laughs> and we're gonna be able to kill him off before he can attack unless he plays a 
Bombard. And I just drew into some two really awesome scrolls here. The Charge Coil attacks every turn. It's got three defense, and it does one damage to a random unit that opponent controls. Less units they have, you kind of know where that damage is going. Iron Ogre for seven resource. It's a 7-7 seven, seven Relentless. Uh, does damage through creatures if it's fatal. And uh, it's got a three countdown. Long countdown, but 7-7, seven, seven, really nice, beefy creature. Lots of damage, lots of defense, and it just pounds through things. It's hilarious. <laughs> really, really good. Really, really good. So I'm glad I did that. I'm glad instead of holding on to that card, I got rid of it to uh, draw two, because these are two really awesome cards. And next turn, I'll probably play the Iron Ogre. Get this beast in play. There's the Bombard. All right, so he's going to do one damage to everything. Uh, he has everything in these four tiles. Not enough to kill any of these, but he still gets the one damage through. And then next turn, these two structures will kill him. Unless he throws something else crazy into the mix, he could throw down a, uh, a two damage, the shock equivalent that's in this game. Ember. Okay, so he's going to do the Ember will do two damage to it when it attacks, so it will die. All right. So that will return with a death. We'll hit that. This damage won't go through, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to throw down the Iron Ogre now. And I'm just going to... I can't play both of these in the same turn. I guess I'll just hold on to both of those, because I do like both of those. That is that. Damage goes through. Almost have our first totem down. <laughs> Almost. We're getting there. Don't you guys worry, we're getting there. I'm pretty confident in my deck. So, it's gonna burn for three. But you never know. I mean, things, especially since there's no decking and cards are co consistently getting reused. Um, you know? All right, so that's pretty good, but not exactly what I want here. We're gonna pull for another resource. I'd actually like to get up to nine resource if at all possible. And why don't we throw down the cannon automation here? And we're going to put him... I'll just stick him in the middle so I can be responsive to whatever my opponent's doing. I'm going to be reactive. That's what we'll do. That's a good spot. So wherever he places a unit in relation to my units, I can respond is basically the idea. So that's how, when I start a match... I focus on the middle. In a situation like this, I focus on the middle. It'd be a lot different if he had uh, structures and units spread throughout the battlefield, but that's not the case right now in this particular match. Uh, he is just down to a useless contraption. I'm not being rude. It's literally a useless contraption. <laughs> it's an 0-4 for one. Nice early game defense. I don't really like them though. You know, it's later game, it can be pretty good, but <clears throat> it's just, it's so, because you can move creatures through through tiles, you know, you can move move creatures around. Ooh, this is four incoming damage. It's actually really scary. He's got four incoming damage next turn. How do I respond? This guy would take three, but then he might like shock it or something too. How I respond is like this. I move him to safety. And then I play something else in its place. We are just going to throw down this thing. So that if he decides to hit this creature row, then they're safe. Now, he might just go for the totem, but if I lose that one totem, I really don't care because I'm sort of in a dominant position right now in terms of my units in play. And then we're also going to throw down the charge coil, and I'm going to do that back here, sort of in a little bit of a safer position. And then we hit end turn. So four damage is either going to go through to my mortar, or he's going to do it to this. Um, if he's got direct damage in his hand, he might do it to the mortar so that he can kill it. Uh, otherwise, he'll just go straight for the totem kill. You know, totem kills are obviously good to do, so that wouldn't be bad. But next turn, I'm going to be swinging with my 7-7 seven, seven and my 5-4. Unless he's got direct creature removal. There is a uh, six resource destroy creature. That exists. So he might have one of those. Just sacrificed for scrolls. And then what? What is your deal, Chris? What is your deal? He's got something coming. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> 
Great, Force. Thanks for that information. I thought you knew what he was playing. All right, so he's going to play a rigged whenever I destroy this creature. Uh, the creature that destroys it takes four damage. Not going to attack that now. I'll just move around it. Sort of part of the reason why sometimes structures can be silly. Three damage. He's going to kill off that little charged coil. Did that with his burn. I guess the cool thing here is since we're playing the same faction, you're really getting to see what this faction has to offer. You know? and he's going to do four damage and kill that off. Okay, that's fine. So we've got some choices here. I do seven damage. I could. This thing has got rigged, so I'm not going to hit that. This thing has got plating, so he's going to absorb the first bit of damage. I can concentrate a fire, which is going to damage, then kill him. Or I could do it here and do 10 damage. <laughs> so why don't we do that? We're going to go over here, and we're going to go over here. We're not going to draw cards. We're not going to do resource. We're going to cast this on this, making him attack twice. 10 damage is what we'll go through. We'll kill that. This will kill that. And then all of a sudden, we're just one totem away from the win. Just like that. Concentrate fire in conjunction with cannon automation on an undefended totem is a dead totem. <laughs> yep. That's how it works. All right, so he's got two damage to go through. He's still got the plating on it. And all I need to do is kill one more totem. So my focus, I guess, should just be here. I need to I need to hit this twice, though. So who knows? Maybe I'll go for something else. We're going to have this guy hit next turn, so hopefully he hits... Actually, hopefully he doesn't hit this, because then he'll take four damage. Hopefully he hits the plating off of this guy, at least. There's a burn. Three damage going through to here, and then he's going to kill it. Plus play a Grave Lock Raider. It's a 1-2 Relentless. By itself, nothing really special, but in conjunction with other Grave Locks, all of a sudden a little bit more frightening. We've got a Charge Coil. Instead of playing that, though, we're going to draw two scrolls. I got a Plating plus a Violent Dispersal. Violent Dispersal. Destroy target unit. I don't know if that goes through Plating. This is preventing damage. I don't think that works. Let's see if it kills him yes it does so it's not damage that i dealt it was a destroy in my violent dispersal yes that is a rare card yes it is pretty darn good we could throw down a plating or i could save this for a future discard which i think i will do i don't see any imminent threats here to use a plating hellsbury mortar missed any targets and that did nothing as well <clears throat> basically at this point it's iron iron ogre that might win me the game, as long as he doesn't get another plating, because the plating fully absorbs all seven damage, which means no other damage can go through. But if damage goes through, I just trample over these creatures, which is quite hilarious. Catapult. Should have probably played it over here to defend the one vulnerable totem. And, uh, again, unless he's got a plating in the wings here. Just a few more turns. The Iron Ogre is going to do work, son. Do work. Who knows? The multiplayer is fun. It's very addicting. Can be slow paced as you've clearly seen here in this game. But again, that's more a result of the two decks that we're playing than it is a result of the general pace because it, it can generally go faster than it is here. Now, instead of the violent dispersal, we're gonna just use a burn. Draw a card off of the process as well. Picked up a blast strike. Every time enchanted creature deals damage to a unit, also deals one damage to every adjacent unit. And we could get a catapult here. Catapult to goo. Where would we place that though? Hmm? Guess we could just place it here. Yeah. Why not? Alright. End the turn. Next turn, Iron Ogre attacks. Any blocking creature he plays, if he puts a plating on it, it's gonna get hit with a violent dispersal. So next turn should theoretically be the win. But anything could happen. Anything could happen. Chris could have one of these of his own up his sleeve. I don't know if playing, even if he played two creatures, I don't know that would necessarily be enough. This is seven damage going through, uh, plus my violent dispersal to remove at least one of them. Truthfully, he should have played his Catapult of Goo as a defender for this totem. That would have been sort of the ideal move. But this game's still new. Chris is new. So, you know. It's actually funny, if this is really his first game, like he says, I'm playing ranked. I'm only supposed to 
play against people. Um, I'm only supposed to play against people who are of a similar rank, so I don't know. And I've I've played quite a few multiplayer matches. I'm not like new new to the multiplayer scene or anything, so it's kind of weird to be honest with you that we are where we are. I don't think this is 100% necessary, but we're just going to throw that down anyways. And then we will go ahead and end the turn, which will go for the attack for the win. Okay, so multiplayer match, you just watched it. I won. 366 gold was the total. And let me check, I'd like to check my rating right now, because again, I'm interested if he is really a new player, how I played against him. So I haven't played a, as much as I, like I originally played a ton and I was in the, like around the top 100 rank. Now I'm down to rank 500. Lots of people playing a lot more than me over the past few days. Um, we do have enough gold to buy another booster pack, so I will quickly do that with you guys because it's so awesome to pick these up. So we're going to scroll through the commons here. All pretty standard stuff. And we'll take a look at the uncommons and the rare. Uncommon is Divine Mark. When enchanted creature is destroyed, it is returned to its owner's hand. If it's killed or damaged by another unit, that unit is also returned to the owner's hand. Hmm, interesting. Target unit is moved to a random unoccupied adjacent tile. Draw one card, only one resource. That's pretty good. And then the rare. Ooh, unleash inner power. I think I've already got one of these. Uh, so here's the second. Target creature's attack is increased by its health value. Then its health is set to two. That's actually really good. All right, so that was some multiplayer. That was a multiplayer game. Um, then the last thing I want to show you here in this video, the only thing that we really haven't taken a look at here in scrolls, is the uh, the trials? So the trials, they're they're basically just these little mini challenges um, where you've got you've got an objective to meet. So the easiest, the first trial, destroy three of your opponent's idols. Your opponent idols start with just five health. You begin the battle with two pre-owned eternal statues. Wow, that's really easy. Well, they start to get a little bit harder. Let's look at this here. Um, Men of Faith. Destroy three of your opponent's idols to win. Your opponent begins the battle with a pre-deployed shrine and three sin-marked uh, sin zealots. So my opponent, it's a standard game, I have to destroy three idols, but my opponent starts the game with a bunch of creatures in play. Wow. And then it gets even harder. There is, uh, what was that? Maximum Wolf. This one was ridiculous. Your opponent begins the battle with one Great Wolf and two Ragged Wolves and two Mangy Wolves. That is ridiculous because the Great Wolf gets plus one attack for every other wolf in play. I don't even remember how I won that. I think I played I think I think played the deck I was just playing and just focused on trying to get max damage off. But the cool thing about these, check, take out this one, a quickie. Uh, destroy your opponent's idols. Uh, eat, every creature has haste. So even the creatures he plays. So I decided, basically what's been happening is as I've been going through these trials, making custom decks to sort of try to figure out how to defeat the trial is how it works. So these are pretty cool. Uh, there's a handful of uh, easy, medium, and hard. Once you, you complete them for a gold reward, once you've done it once, you can't get that reward again, but all of the ones that you haven't done, uh, you'll get a gold reward. And it's a significant amount, so this is gonna get you a bunch of cards uh, by going through these, other than getting cards just by playing. You get much less gold by just doing a simple match against a computer. I believe the most gold that you can get besides the trials is actually from doing ranked matches against real people, so. That's what you're going to want to do if you want to pick up a bunch of cards. And that's going to do it here for this video. Uh, our Game of the Week coverage of Squirrels is coming to a conclusion. I will be ending with a final thoughts video. However, that won't be up this weekend. I'm actually about to leave for the weekend. I'm just going to visit family. And uh, I'll be back Sunday night. And I'll be back to making videos on Monday. So Monday, I'll do my final thoughts of Scrolls. I like the game. I think it's great. Uh, we're just going to wrap up with... Some final impressions and uh, some gameplay as well, but that'll be that. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.